like to introduce my guest speakers uh, from N5. So I'm just I'm, I'm gonna briefly introduce himself and then uh, the Zoom will be giving a talk uh, virtually. Fortunately, it's giving a talk virtually, but uh, it will be given out and uh, so. Uh, uh, Dr. Yu is a lead senior scientist and N5. N5 is uh, our neighbor, uh, well, I mean, neighbor, but uh, it's a uh, Maryland based uh, company that is developing uh, industrial centers. And uh, N5 is uh, uh, Maryland with a uh, research foundation as well. So, Dr. Yu is a uh, lead. Senior scientist at the N5 Center in Copley, and he's currently conducting a, a industrial research on the vegetation as the fourth catalytic semiconductor gas entry on the nitride uh, platform and developing a semiconductor processes uh, to develop the vegetation. And he's focusing on the development of uh, nanostructure nano oxide materials. For detecting gas and elements, and including the like pollutants and warfare gases. <clears throat> and initially, he tried to just well integrate the developed material into the digital gas sensor model uh, in a small four factor that provides the with high accuracy and high sensitivity. And uh, Dr. Yoon is with a PhD uh, from Cold National University. And uh, in uh, 2011, and he was a postdoc researcher for chief at the University of Pennsylvania and also in Dark Hollow National Lab and joined uh, N5. And he is a researcher with a very um, strong support of our office work in the field of uh, semiconductor materials and uh, metal bias uh, bias. And he's developing uh, technology to improve the efficiency of components of uh, um, drives, electronics, and also electronic devices that has to do with the quantum mechanics as well. So, uh, uh, I'm very honored to introduce himself and uh, I'm very looking forward to uh, this talk. So, I'll just uh, give him a flow so that uh, let's welcome our speaker. Hello, uh, do you hear me well? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm I'm Hyung Jin Yoon, lead sensor scientist of M5 sensors. So uh, we are actually developing the carbon nitride based gas sensor for detecting uh, the wide range of the uh, chemicals like uh, uh, pollutant or the greenhouse gas. Uh, the warfare gases and many things. So we we are actually the uh, the electronic company, and we are making the semiconductor based gas sensor. <clears throat> and uh, today, I think so. Instead of the introducing the company's the research, because the you know this uh, the seminar is for the the quantum science and technology. So uh, I. Things I'd better to deliver uh, some research that has been done at the Los Angeles National Lab because I'm a I I have the study the quantum dot the for a while and the I would say I'm expert in the the quantum quantum dot chemistry and the science so uh, I would chose I, I chose the quantum dot device and for today's seminar and I will share. Okay, so uh, yeah, today I will talk about the carrier transport behavior of the heavy metal free copper indium selenium certified quantum dot. So as I mentioned, the I, this work is conducted at the Los Alamos, Los Alamos National Lab. Um, so today I will first first introduce what is the quantum dot and why 
the copper indium selenide selenium sulfide column dot is attractive than other materials. Then I will talk about the fundamental <clears throat> catalyst transport behavior of the copper indium selenide sulfide column dot and their the practical application. So uh, I assume that you may heard uh, you may heard you may have heard about the quantum dot for a few years since Samsung quantum dot LED TV is released the market. I then say it is part of the modern electronic operational devices because of the, their very unique the optical and electrical properties. Simply saying, the quantum dot are colloidal semiconductor nanocrystal having the quantum confinement effect. So you have to remember the term of the quantum confinement effect to understand what is the quantum dot. The quantum confinement effect is described as the size dependent band gap energy, which means their band gap energy can be tuned by controlling their sizes. Uh, this figure A explains the quantum confinement effect. Bulk semiconductor has a continuous conduction and the balance band. When their confining uh, dimension reaches to the extra bore radius, the continuous energy level uh, becomes a discrete as yielding confining uh, as yielding uh, their electronic optic optical properties deviated from the dose of the bulk material. In particular, uh, these phenomena. Uh, ultimately results in the blue shift in the light emission and absorption as their size decreases. This photograph uh, in the figure B uh, shows the colloid quantum dot with a different nanocrystal. Uh, I heard that there is a problem in the, speak, the speaker there, right? Yeah. Uh, can you hold this? Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Oh, yeah. Uh, let me see. Can you hold on a minute? Okay, sure. Thank you. So um here we sorry. Uh, can <clears throat> this one? Yeah, I'm not sure. If it... Did I say something?
Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Is All right. Yeah, so All I'm right. Perfect. Um, this one is dead. Yep. Mm -hmm. I have to pull up the I think we can continue. Yeah. Okay. Now is it good? You hear well? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. So I will continue. <laughs> uh, yeah, just a briefly, I will restart from the concept of the quantum dot. So uh, quantum dot is just simply the colloidal semiconductor nanocrystal having quantum confinement effect. So, so what is the quantum confinement effect? Uh, quantum confinement effect is described as a size dependent band gap energy, which means that their band gap energy can be tuned by controlling their sizes. Uh, this figure, figure A, explains uh, what is the quantum confinement effect here. Bulk semiconductor has a continuous conduction band and balance band. Then when their defining dimension reaches uh, X on ball radius, the continuous energy level becomes a discrete, uh, as shown in this figure. And as yielding their electronic, electronic and optical properties deviate from the those of bulk material. In particular, these phenomena ultimate uh, results in the blue shift in the light absorption and emission as their size decreases. <clears throat> so this photograph and the figure B uh, show the colloidal quantum dot with the different semiconductor nanocrystal thus illuminating the different photoluminescence from purple to deep red. So, so far, uh, using the electrical, the unique electrical and optical properties, researchers have fabricated high performance optoelectronic devices such as solar cell, LED is very famous now, and the photo detector and the transistor too. So, so far, uh, many devices developed it, and I also developed the cadmium selenide quantum dot based the sensitized solar cell using the different size of the cadmium selenide quantum dot from the 2.5 to the 7.5 nanometer. And I studied about the cadmium transfer dynamics and mechanism, and also related the overall solar cell performance. Also, uh, and using, with using the left chacogenized quantum dot, I have fabricated the field effect transistor uh, with using the, their ink. So with using other bands, uh, legal exchange technique, I fabric, I prepare the colloidal quantum dot ink and just a drop, dropping the, this ink to the substrate, the field effect transistor is easily fabricated. So, the one advantage of the, the semiconductor nanocrystal device is the printable. So I also emphasize the, that printable uh, electronic, open electronic devices here. Uh, and also they have a very unique, the electrical optical properties. Uh, but however, there is a long standing concern. So as I shown before, so I have used the last psychogenide, Kevin psychogenide. You may feel something, right? So, which is notorious toxicity. Uh, in particular, cadmium poisoning causes the Itai Itai disease in Japan around 1912, manifesting symptoms with a severe pain in the spine and joint. Lead containing psychogenide, quantum dot, Often described as a uh, cadmium free, but you know, lead poisoning also severely impacts the mental and the physical development. Therefore, development of the environmentally friendly quantum dot in urgency to uh, achieve the sustainable quantum dot technologies. This is why Samsung Electronics is also using the indium phosphide as a uh, uh, as a, their base the base. Uh, the technology thing is the phosphide also uh, has a toxicity. So, and I'm more interested in the copper indium selenium sulfide quantum dot. This is why I'm interested in the heavy metal free copper indium selenium sulfide quantum dot. Of course, there are more room to improve, but at least the copper indium selenium sulfide 
itself are composed of the heavy metal free element. So regarded as uh, environmental friendly alternatives to cadmium or lead containing materials. Further, uh, upper indium selenium sulfide column dots are composed of the earth abundant elements, therefore economical, right? So, uh, so far, high quality of copper in the seven certified quantum dots has applied to the bioimaging, agriculture, and many others. Infant solar cells are also fabricated with a copper in the seven certified quantum dots, but the photo conversion is around 6%, and still lower than other types of solar cells. So I attribute the low efficiency to the poorly understood nature of the transport behavior of the copper in the certified quantum dust in film. Therefore, I unveil the character transport behaviors of the copper in the certified quantum dust in film. Based on the fundamental study on the carrier transport mechanism of the copper in the certified quantum dust in film, I conducted two research projects. The so one is disclose the photocatalyst transport mechanism and dynamics and generally to fabricate uh, ultra low power logic gate devices using the copper in the selenite quantum dots. So in this presentation, I will mostly uh, cover dust carrier transport and then the briefly explain about the photocatalyst transport for making a uh, photo detector, which is the optical sensor. So uh, transfer the mechanism of the copper in the selenium certified quantum dust, especially uh, is the uh, subtitle is the two-stage conductance model. And uh, why this two-stage conductance model is proposed in this, this uh, quantum dust in film and uh, how to utilize the, the two-stage conductance model for the practical application. Let's think about the possible surface defect of the binary semiconductor, like a lead selenide. Lead selenide has only lead or lead and selenium in, in this material, right? So depending on the synthesis condition, it can be red rich, red rich, or selenium rich. Then that lead selenide quantum dust has two instinct the defects, like a lead vacancy, or selenium vacancy. Then depending on the charge balance, uh, it shows the P-type devices, it shows the N-type devices. It is a very simple. But the alternate, alternative, uh, the test copper in the selenium sulfide, uh, this important distinction from the lead chaconite or cadmium chaconite is the presence of the two cation and two anion. Right, so which makes them prone to a variety of the defects. For example, two metal vacancy or the copper in this site we call is anti side copper defect provide an excess hole to yield the P type devices. On the other side, two anion vacancy, uh, anti side indium defect, or interstitially incorporated metal provide uh, the anti transport behavior. Uh, the copper, copper in the selenium certified quantum dust itself intrinsically shows the P-type transport behavior due to the most likely the low formation energy of the copper vacancy and the anti-side copper uh, defect. So thus the whole generating the vacancies are spontaneously formed during the synthesis of the nanocrystal than to yield the P-type devices. However, these P-type polarity uh, can be shifted toward the N-type behavior easily by creating the indium related defect on purpose, which indicate that the transport polarity of the copper indium selenium sulfide can be readily tuned via controlling defect state. So I prepared the various copper in the selenium certified quantum dots having different fraction of the selenium from the zero, uh, zero to eight percent. And uh, synthesis is like a cooking, you know, so just to put the precursor in a pot and the temperature is raised. Of course, it requires some special techniques to control the, uh, the oxygen uh, 
contents in a reactor or some vacuum the technique, but it is uh, not that difficult. After purification, the copper ignium selenium sulfide are photon dots are dispersed in the octane, and the PEM image show the synthesis synthesized the copper and selenium sulfide quantum dot or tetrahedral structure with uh, their average edge length is around the 7.3 nanometer. And their band gap and band structure are investigated with uh, uh, spectroscopy and electrochemical analysis. And band gap is uh, tuned from the zero, oh, no, sorry, uh, 1.8 to 1.3 electron volt as controlling the selenium content from 0 to 80%. And we also the, uh, studied about the position of the conduction band and the balance band, and also copper uh, related defect, defect state with using electrochemical methods. Uh, so for, uh, stud for studying the catalyst transfer behavior, I usually use uh, I usually study about the electron electron or hole mobility, which is a cannon mobility. So to obtain to obtain the cannon mobility, I fabricated the field effect transistor, and field effect transistor are uh, fabricated with the uh, return the copper and selenium sulfide quantum dot, and the schematic diagram describes the fabrication process and silicon. Silicon dioxide substrate is used as a substrate, and silicon is used for the gate, and silicon dioxide is used for the uh, dielectric layer, gate oxide. So this is the bottom gate configuration. On the cleaned substrate, I deposit the metal uh, as a just electrode. So gold is for P-type, and indium is for anti-type uh, devices. So on pre-patterned substrate, I spin coded the quantum dot uh, and is followed by the legal exchange step as dipping the coded sample in the legal exchange solution. So this legal exchange is pretty important. The quantum dots are usually synthesized with uh, organometallic methods. So their surface is uh, surrounded by organic ligand uh, for being stabilized in the solvent. Here at PM image, you see the um, the inter interparticle the space right is the uh, this is a surrounded by is the presence of the organic ligand so uh, but these low organic ligands are insulators so it can disturb uh, the carrier transport between nanocrystal so for better electronic coupling between the quantum dots. The long organic ligand should be replaced to the shorter one. And uh, in this study, uh, ethanol diol having two carbon chains is used for short ligand. And this step is repeated to obtain the desired thickness of the 100 nanometer. And then the quantum dot field effect transistor are finalized by being annealed at the high temperature. Uh, for achieving the P-type transistor, I annealed it to 150 degrees C just for removing organic residual. But uh, for anti -tra transistor, indium contact uh, transistor are annealed at 250 degrees C because the uh, because indium is the uh, indium's melting point is around the 150 degrees C. The heat treatment at 250 degrees C leads the indium to be diffused into the channel throughout the entire device channel. So subsequently create the indium related donor state yielding anti-transport like this. So this is the uh, alpha, alpha curve uh, of the anti devices. So from the alpha characteristics of the anti copper indium selenium surface, electron mobility is derived for each copper and selenium sulfide quantum dot stem. The mobility is marked as a blue dot in this graph. And these data reveals the dramatic uh, three order of the magnitude increase in the mobility as the selenium content changes from the zero to 80%. Uh, 
uh, if you are very sharp in the this field of transistor study and the the semiconductor uh, field, you may feel something occur to this graph. So uh, I also found that that trend, and uh, this trend is kept, that could not be explained with a traditional transport model. Why? I will explain in detail. So let's start with the definition of the carrier transport mobility. Carrier transport mobility indicates uh, indicate how quickly carrier can move through the semiconductor when pulled by the electric the field. The unit of the carrier mobility is the centimeter square per volt second. It can be rewritten to the centimeter per second divided by the voltage per centimeter. So it is the term of the drift velocity of the carrier per unit electric field. So it is term of velocity, which means it is the carrier's velocity, right? Then the why the carrier velocity is uh, uh, shows a difference at the different setting of contact. This is, it was key. The, the schematic diagram and lower slide show the already reported carrier transport model in nanocrystal thin film. At the very beginning, researchers uh, speculated the mobile carrier is transferred by hopping through the electrical, electrically coupled conduction band. But at 2011, my previous supervisor, Dr. Klimov, proposed that at dark condition, carrier is a transfer through the media state, uh, media state, which is created by the surface defect, defect. But other researchers did not agree about this media state conductance, and they, uh, the counter suggested the uh, carrier transfer mechanism analogous to the full Frankel formalism. Uh, which he described a variable range of hopping in highly disordered semiconductor thin film. So in the in a large electric field, the electron is thermally and electrically excited to the conduction band and transferred to the neighboring nanocrystal. But those old models commonly propose that charged carrier is transferred through the single path, either a conduction band or a media scape. Thing is, with this single path carrier transport conductance model, uh, the this trend cannot be explained. Uh, I will show why. So, okay, uh, suppose you are driving from uh, Georgia Mason University to M5 Sensor Rockville, and uh, there are just a single single wave. Suppose this is a uh, 495 and 270 is a highway. Then with a given condition, such as the number of the vehicle, the road condition, the weather, and the many others, your vehicle's velocity is fixed, right? So just the average velocity is just a fixed. They are not changing. But what if there are two paths? The one is a narrow and rough, you may make a one and a half hours to be this way, and the other is a highway, like a 495 and 270, and it takes a 10 minutes to enter the highway, and uh, the 40 minutes on highway, and access to reach to the, uh, sorry, this way, so <laughs> reach to the, uh, the Rockville 10 minutes. Then which way we will choose? The total is uh, it takes a one hour. It takes a one and a half hour. So I would say most of you will divert it to the highway, right? So uh, this is the inmate, uh, inmate uh, energy distribution of the car, but uh, uh, many vehicles is uh, populated at this highway. But what if in this case, you need to drive one hour to enter highway and another one hour to get uh, M5 sensors. Then what will be your choice? Then definitely this local way, right? The long way to reach to the highway may deter you choose the highway. Then the average the vehicle speed would be similar to the just a single path traffic. Between former and later, which case, 
overall vehicle velocity is faster, I would say former, right? So this is the main idea of the two-stage conductor model. So distance from start or destination to the, uh, the highway is the determinant factor for the, the overall, the average vehicle, vehicle velocity. So there are two distinct carrier transport paths. The so one is the high mobility conduction band. The other is the low mobility defect band. The carrier within the native defect band can be transferred to adjacent nanocrystal by hopping directly, or a fraction of the carrier is suddenly excited to the conduction band and followed by transport via a high mobility conduction band. The effective the carrier mobility can be found as a weighted average of the conduction band and defect band mobility, right? That is expressed as an equation one, is a weighted, weighted average. And the electron occupancies of the conduction band and donor state can be expressed as a Maxwell Boltzmann statistic. Then, simply combining these two equations, uh, the temperature dependent effective carrier transport mobility can be obtained is a uh, equation three. It's just a combining two equations. So uh, based on the DC equation, when the gap is uh, greater, much greater than thermal energy KP, the exponential term becomes negligible. Then overall uh, carrier transport mobility is close to the uh, defect band mobility. Here, so based on this graph, when the uh, cellular fraction is smaller than 0.3, you see the saturated carrier transport mobility is around uh, uh, 7, 10 to the minus 6. Then we assume that this one is a uh, uh, defect band mobility. And also to get uh, more the parameters, uh, the, the I assume the linear relation between the energy gap and the fraction of the selenium for reducing variables. And I feed it the, ex the experiment data with the model equation. It is very well matched. And from the this feeding, conduction band mobility is uh, reckoned to 8, 10 to the minus 3, which is uh, 1,000 times higher than defect band mobility. And the energy gap was also estimated for each copper indium selenium sulfide quantum dot. So for example, the copper indium sulfide, no selenium material, has around the 400 MeV of the defect band, uh, defect band position. And the, the, this, you know, this is much greater than the room temperature thermal energy. So this is why the, this copper indium sulfide case most majority of the carrier is transferred through the media state. But uh, the high standing containing quantum dot, most of the carrier are thermally excited to the conduction band due to the small energy gap for being transferred to the neighboring nanocrystal. So uh, these, uh, the, we're using the two-stage conductance model, we could get uh, uh, these energy gap uh, state, the state energy level. So uh, with a similar, similar way, the whole mobility is also obtained for the gold contact devices. This is marked as a red dot. And yeah, so it is analyzed and the parameters are so analyzed with the same way as I have done for the anti devices. And uh, their parameter is summarized in this table. And yeah, this is very simple to say the conductance model, but it can successfully explain the uh, mobility changes changes according to the selenium content. Here, um, yeah, I, you know, I'm engineer, uh, I, my major is a chemical engineer. So uh, I have thought, so what is the benefit of the, uh, this defect band. Can we utilize the this defect band for the practical application? Uh, the, you know, the at dark state definitely it looks like the, the prohibit the carrier transport, uh, in, 
improvement of the carrier transport mobility. We can just decrease the carrier transport mobility. Then what, why we have to think about this uh, leading state for developing the good electronic or electronic devices, right? So I uh, somehow, I, I love to uh, utilize the, the uh, media state, the TPAC band for the practical application. This is why I have, the, I conducted the experiment about the photo carrier transport uh, behavior. I don't want to go into detail about this one, but this experiment is quite, uh, it's a, a little bit complicated, but uh, simply explain, explain that uh, you, I just measure field effect transistor performance with irradiating the mo monochromatic site. So like a 15 nanometer, the so 1000 nanometer. And this, uh, this is the, the <clears throat> and then the re summarize these graphs uh, based on the, uh, the irradiated light. Then I could get uh, some information about the kinetic transfer the mechanism under light irradiation, like uh, the hot state involved and hot trap involved, and also mitigate involved in this uh, kind of transport and mechanic, uh, transport. So then uh, how can we utilize uh, this mitigate state and the hot trap for the practical application? For, uh, for a study of that, I, uh, we conducted the carrot, the ultra fast, Photoconductance uh, measurement with using the oscilloscope and also ultra fast laser. And the, through the, this experiment, we could get uh, the parameters for the carrier transport dynamics. Here, the KT constant and the this lifetime to, uh, from the condition band, the detection band is so fast like uh, uh, this. So it, uh, traffic time is around is under nanosecond, and you see the very sharp peak here. This is uh, also it shows the uh, very short, uh, very fast uh, response to the photon of the, these devices. Then we will be using uh, these uh, defect band and also applying the gate to uh, manipulate the. Uh, occupancy of the electron in the defect band or conduction band, then we can, we could make a high performance, uh, the photo detector for the photo counting. So these were the currently the silicon based the photo detector is used for the counting the, the photon, uh, in either the, the visible light and also the IR, IR, uh, reason. But uh, these copper engine cell and surface uh, as utilizing their defect band, we can uh, develop the devices for replacing the silicon based the, the photo detector. And yeah, so this is the majority of the uh, content today I will cover. I just uh, briefly explain, briefly show the what I did with using the others for making the electronic devices. And I also use the P type N type device, P type N type. Uh, tuning uh, properties. I have fabricated CMOS logic devices like uh, uh, CMOS inverter, and uh, this is uh, NAND logic and NOR logic devices using this quantum dot. So uh, these logic devices fabrication can show uh, easy fabrication of the logic devices with using quantum dot and also. Uh, this device fabrication is based on the advanced legal exchange technique. Then it shows the uh, other vista to make to do the to, to the tour uh, the advanced quantum dot based uh, sensors like a biosensor or a gas sensor, chemical sensor, depending on the which ligand is the uh, uh, observed on the uh, quantum dot circuit. So uh, this uh, this study shows the best feasibility. All right, uh, I summarized today's talk. Uh, yeah, I successfully demonstrate the carrier transport mobility of the copper indium cell and certified quantum down and propose the two-state conductance model. Also, 
uh, I fabricated ultra low power CMOS logic devices with using this technique. So uh, this program, I appreciate the uh, Dr. Nemo is a famous the quantum dot uh, photophysics and chemi chemistry uh, scientist and Jeff Gatriga and other lab member. They all, I think, they all left. <laughs> and and uh, now new members are studying there, and uh, I really appreciate uh, the staff members. And thank you for your kind attention. All right, thank you. Uh, we have a couple of minutes for a couple of uh, questions from an audience, please. Uh, um, was the the final um, the final product that you came up with was that what you originally intended on making, or was this more of a? Uh, it, it seems like the way that the, the slides proceeded, it seemed like it was an effect that you discovered looking at some other process, maybe, and then had sort of like exploited that, or was this the plan from the start? Uh, uh thing is, I can't hear you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, can you, can you ask again? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, sure. So yeah, it is, uh, yeah. can you hear me now? Is this clearer? Yeah, it's better. Much better. Okay. Um, my question is more, uh, so the final device that you ended up making, it seems like that wasn't the or at least from the way that the slides proceeded, it didn't seem like that was the original intention. Like this was an effect that you had discovered, maybe looking at some other effects or looking for something else. Is that sort of the, the right idea? Did it like, did it proceed the way that you expected it to, or was this sort of a discovery from some other idea? So, okay. Uh, do you see the my screen now? Yes. I believe so, okay. So here, so the study about the properly independent surface, the lead me, the what is the best electronic material that, right? So, uh, so it is from it's different from the photoconductor and uh, utilizing the uh, this type of band the, for making the electronic devices and uh, you know the fast the the category is the is the most important the factor to make a good devices. Then based on the previous research, what is the best material? Is it uh, the copper and selenium sulfide with a 0.8, 80% uh, of selenium? No, it should be copper and selenide, right? It's based on the, uh, the trend. So this is why I have used the uh, copper and selenide for making just a focusing on the electronic devices and also apply the legally changed advanced legally change technique to make a great anti and anti -anti So yeah, it's a good question. It is not from the utilizing the defect band of mobility, but it is for minimizing the effect of the defect of the defect band. I'm sorry about the not to explain that fully the before the in the presentation. I didn't have a, uh, enough time to explain that. Sorry about that. Thank you. Any other questions you might have? Otherwise, I have one question. So I wonder about mm -hmm. <clears throat> the application of this uh, technology is using the quantum dot. So do you envision that you're going to use that this uh, technology using the quantum dots for optoelectronic device? Or uh, could we use this uh, materials for gas sensing, for example? So yeah, it has a lot of the feasibility. The thing is the first one, operational devices. Uh, the, I also try to make a, uh, is a not diode, but transistor. So uh, like anything, diode is uh, famous, the recent technique, but uh, we also can make a light energy transistor too, with using the discovering the same surface. And also uh -huh. for applying the disk gas sensor, uh, okay, here, I don't know, it has, uh, not here, 
Uh, so this one is a good example. Uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, that if you synthesize the semiconductor nanocrystal photon, you see the organic compound surrounding the nanocrystal. Then you have to exchange the this organic compound to the organic lead and to the shorter one. And here, I just uh, focusing on the uh, ammonium iodide ligand. It is uh, it doesn't have any organic the chain. It is very short atomic atomic ligand. So I use the, this atomic ligand for uh, making the the greater mobility. But if you are interested in the the sensor, then you can you can you know, utilize the other type of the organic ligand having in the functional group for the desire the gas sensor, guys, desire the chemical you want to detect, then you can make a, a great gas sensor with a quantum dust. That is a, the discussed for a while. But thing is uh, so far the problem with the selectivity. So if we the if the it detects some depending on the which design you use, but the people try that and it detects everything. <laughs> so <laughs> then it, it shows us some problem in the selectivity, but there is a feasibility of about the manipulating the surface ligand for the, the, the chemical detection. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, mm -hmm. All right, then unless you have any other questions, please uh, let's uh, thank our speaker for 